Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Omid and in this video I'm going to talk about the bones of the lower limb. The bones of the lower limb are hip bone, then in the thigh region or femoral region we have a femur, in the crural or at the crural region we have uh, two bones like a forearm region, the medial is located tibia, which is located anteriorly and uh, medially, and on the lateral side we have fibula, which are uh, which is located on the lateral side and posteriorly, so that's why the lateral side also is called the fibular side and the medial side also is called tibial side. Then we are going to discuss about the bones of the foot that they are classified as a seven tarsal bones, five uh, metatarsal bones and finally the phalanges or digitorum that uh, we are going to discuss and they are more or less similar to the bones of the hand. So first bone is hip bone. Uh, hip bone is uh, consists of uh, basically three bones. The ilium which is located cranially Ischium, which is, or ischium, which is located posteriorly and downward, and uh, pubic bone, which is located anteriorly and downward. All these three bones, they are fusing to each other uh, at the place which is called acetabulum. This fossa that you can see is called acetabulum. Each three bones, they have body, and their body or corpus, they are connected to each other at this acetabulum via cartilage. So, it means that if you draw the letter of Y or Y, as you see in this picture, uh, we divide the acetabulum to the superior part, posterior part, and anterior part. This part is the part of the body of the ilium, superiorly or cranially, this part is the part of the body of ischium, posteriorly, and this part is the part of the pubic bone, anteriorly. So, in this place, they are fusing together. We are going to discuss one by one. The ilium has two main parts, the body that already we discussed, and the cranial widening part, which is called ala, ala, Latin, uh, is ca uh, English terminology, is a wing, wing of the ilium or uh, ala of the ilium. Ischium has also two parts, this part is the body, and the next part is the ramus of the ischium. Then we have pubic bone, which consists of three main parts, the body, superior ramus, and inferior ramus of the pubic bone. Now the details. At the level of the ala or wing of the ilium, that you can see here, at the top, we have this crest. This crest is called iliac crest. What is at the outer surface is called 
gluteal surface because the gluteus muscles they are attaching here the inner surface which is a little bit more concave is called the sacro-pelvic surface because it's toward the sacrum and pelvis. The iliac crest that we explain it, it's at the end anteriorly, it's finishing at this spine which is called anterior superior iliac spine. Under that, we have another spine, which is called anterior inferior iliac spine. The other side, if you are going to the posterior side of the iliac crest, we have the similar spine, but posteriorly, it means that posterior superior iliac spine and under that inferior posterior or posterior inferior iliac spine how to recognize which side is posterior which side anterior the most important or the easy uh, landmark that you can immediately uh, recognize is this notch whenever you see the big notch and smaller notch here so this part is posterior side it means the other side is anterior side okay so at the inner surface or we said sacropelvic surface of the ilium we have this fossa this fossa is the place is called iliac fossa and is the place for the attachment of the same muscle iliacus muscle is a part of the iliopsis muscle the iliacus muscle is attaching here then more posteriorly you can see the same uh, articular facet that we had it at the sacral or sacrum and it was looks like a auricle shape of the ear so that's why we have the auricular articular facet or our auricular facet or surface posterior to that again you can see some roughness the same that we had it in sacrum so this roughness is called iliac tuberosity is the place for the attachment of the ligaments the uh, for ligaments that they are stringing the joint the sacroiliac joint and the ligaments that they are attaching they are posterior and interosseous ligament sacroiliac ligaments so in this place so to recognize and uh, understand that the articulation of this auricular surface of the ilium with the auricular surface of the sacrum I can show you the the pelvis as a whole and the pelvis as a whole here we have a ilium as you see again here is the iliac fossa and here in this place that we had the auricular surface or auricular facet there is an articulation with the auricular surface or facet of the sacrum. So, then the next part that we are going to talk is that the from auricular facet or surface, we have a line which is called our arcuate line arcuate line it's like an arch shape line that is starting from the approximately at the level of the auricular surface is going directed inferiorly and anteriorly till it will reach to the superior ramus of the pubic bone 
at the posterior surface, it means that, uh, or uh, outer surface, it means that is the sacropelvic surface. Uh, is uh, you can find here I draw it to be more uh, clear you can find uh, three lines those lines they are placed for attachment of the gluteal muscles and that's why the name is arising from this uh, terminology it means that we have the posterior gluteal line this is anterior gluteal line and uh, uh, here above the acetabulum is the inferior gluteal line placed for attachment of the gluteal muscle. Uh, as I mentioned it to recognize which part is posterior, so the posterior side is very clear when you see this big notch. This big notch is called a greater sciatic notch greater sciatic notch which is starting under the uh, posterior inferior iliac spine and it's making a notch and then we have we reach to the spine which is called ischial or ischial spine then after that we have smaller notch here which is called lesser sciatic notch so greater sciatic notch ischial or ischial spine and the lesser sciatic notch then uh, for the iliac crest that you can see here the iliac crest usually we divide them to the medial lateral and intermediate lips and at this place, which is located a little bit posteriorly, uh, is, is, is located in the outer surface and anteriorly, there is a big tubercle. And this big tubercle is called gluteal tubercle, or also is called Waldier tubercle also. And this is the place for uh, origin of the gluteus medius muscle, this iliac tubercle or valier tubercle, which is more, li more in uh, outer lip, is continuation of the, the outer lip, and it's on the outer surface, and it's toward the uh, uh, anteriorly, uh, behind the anterior superior iliac uh, spine. If you go it a little bit toward posterior, in this area you can see the gluteal tuber uh, tubercle or uh, Waldier uh, tubercle, s or is called also iliac tubercle. Three terminology. Okay. Then we are going to discuss about the uh, about the ischium. Uh, ischium or ischium, as we said, we have the main part here, which is a body or corpus, which is fusing at the acetabular region. Then we have this ball shape or tubercular shape structure, which is called ischial tuberosity, sometimes also is called tubercle. And uh, this is the place that we are sitting on it. So this is determining the posterior part of this bone. And then after the ischial tuberosity or tubercle, we are continuing downward and anteriorly this structure which is called the ramus of the ischium or ischial ramus. And then is continue with the pubic bone, the inferior ramus of the pubic bone. Regarding the pubic bone, which is located anteriorly, we had three main parts, as we mentioned it before, the body, the superior ramus, and also the inferior ramus. 
So we mentioned it before that that the ileum in the internal surface or the sacropelvic surface there is a line, arch shaped line, which is called arcuate line. The arcuate line is continued downward and toward anterior and it reached to this place a little bit is the projection part which is called iliopubic eminence is the border uh, line or border place between the ilium and pubic bone. So this part is called iliopubic eminence. Continuation at the superior edge of the superior ramus of the pubic, you have the uh, sharp edge which is called pectent osis pubis or pectent of the pubic bone. This pectent of the uh, uh, osis pubis is continue to this ball shaped structure which is called pubic tubercle. Pubic tubercle is the place for the uh, insertion of the uh, inguinal ligament is very important ligament that is starting from the anterior superior iliac spine and is inserted to the pubic tubercle which is very important. Then we are continuing forward very important. Then you can see the symphysis of the pubis or pubic symphysis. This is the place that one hip bone is connecting to the or joining to the another hip bone at the place which is called pubic symphysis and that's why we have in this area the articular facet or surface which is called symphysial surface and at this symphysial surface again I'm going to show you here in the pelvis as a whole this is one pubic bone and this is another pubic bone and in this symphysis of the pubic or pubic symphysis at the symphysial surface as one left and right they are joining together and this articulation is called symphysis so anteriorly it's two pubic bones they are joining together and posteriorly the auricular surface of the ileum is joining with the sacrum in one side and the other side as well as a sacroiliac joint posteriorly and pubic symphysis anteriorly and the whole together they are forming pelvis. As you see here, since I have it here, you can see the arcuate line which is a border, a part of the border between the greater pelvis and the lesser pelvis that inside the lesser pelvis there are the organs, the urogenital organs and also the rectum is passing here that we are going to discuss it later. Back to the pubic bone. So we finished here the symphysial surface of the pubic bone. So then after that we are continuing downward and toward the posteriorly there is the inferior ramus of the pubic bone which is joining and fusing with the ramus of the ischium or ischium and uh, the, uh, at the inferior margin of the inferior ramus of the pubic bone there is a sharp edge or crest which is called crista fallica or fallic crest in this area it's attaching a cross of the penis or the cross of the clitoris. So the position of the bone in my body is like this. So and here is the inferior, if I show it to you better, so here is the inferior uh, surface or inferior edge of the inferior ramus of the pubic and it's called phallic crest or crista phallica. 
between all this part that I explained, so it's reminding the foramen, relatively big foramen, which is called obturator foramen. Obturator foramen uh, is the place for attachment in at the dissection. I will show you there is a membrane which is called obturator membrane and, be, uh, and in external and internal surface of this membrane there is a place for attachment of the uh, external and internal obturator muscle. At the inner side, anteriorly and uh, cranially, you can see a groove which is called obturator groove or sulcus and here is the passage of the same name obturator nerve, artery and vein. So once more at the obturator foramen, here is covered by the membrane, just anteriorly and cranially in internal surface of the obturator foramen, you can see a groove here which is the passage of the obturator nerve artery and vein. Uh, the shape of the obturator foramen, it's uh, important to recognize uh, or it's helpful for the recognize, uh, recognizing of the, if the hip bone is female or male. Uh, usually the obturator foramen, the shape of the obturator foramen in female, it's somehow triangular shape and the transverse direction is, dimension is bigger and uh, vice versa in male the obturator foramen somehow it's the oval shape and is located longitudinally then i will turn it to the external surface the external surface that we said that we had this gluteal line also to recognize the external or the sacropelvic surface you can see that whenever you see the acetabulum, because this acetabulum is the place for the articulation of the head of the femur, like a glenoid cavity that we had it at the scapula that was articulating with the head of the humerus. Here, it must be in the lateral or outer surface to articulate it with the head of the femur. So inside the acetabulum, you can see very nice the half a moon shape articular surface which is called lunate surface. This is the, uh, the basic articular surface inside the acetabulum and it's called lunate surface uh, and the name is arising that it looks like a half a moon and inside it's the deepness of the acetabulum, acetabulum, which is called acetabular fossa. At the inferior part, you can see that the lunate surface, it doesn't reach to each other and it's becoming an opening part, which is called acetabular notch. Acetabular notch. So once more, the structure that you can find at the region of the acetabulum, it's the lunate surface, acetabular fossa, and acetabular notch. Of course, the acetabulum has a, a limb or limbus Latin name, which is making the edge of this acetabulum. Uh, concerning the ilium, ilium uh, in the uh, female, they are more wider, and uh, uh, in the uh, and at the uh, male, the ilium is located in more erected position. And uh, here also, if you look at the uh, pelvis as a whole. So here, at the junction of the, uh, of the two pubic bone at the symphysial uh, region, you can see if uh, at the uh, male, usually we have an uh, angle, 
which is called angulus pubicus or pubic angle. And in female, we don't have angle, we have an arch shape, they call it arcus pubicus or pubic arch in female. Then there is a distance here which is in male usually is longer around 5 cm in female is shorter around 4 till 4.5 four cm. Another landmark that is helping uh, to recognize if it is female or male uh, this is the pelvic inlet and this shape in female it's the transverse dimension is bigger than the anteroposterior dimension and in male it looks like a heart shape it looks like a heart shape so this is the uh, structure that uh, you need to know concerning the uh, hip bone. Uh, for orientation of the hip bone, uh, so to recognize that if it is right side or left side, you have to uh, hold this uh, bone in your hand that the ilium, especially the ala or wing, it must be directed cranially. Ischium must be posteriorly. Posteriorly, we said that you recognize it, the best landmark. You, you can choose whatever that you want. So, but for me, the best landmark is this uh, greater sciatic notch that is located posteriorly, or this big tubercle or tuberosity of the ischium, which is posteriorly. And uh, the Acetabulum, we said that it must be toward outside that the head of the femur is articulating with the acetabulum and in this case this surface of the ilium is the gluteal surface that the gluteus muscle or gluteal muscles they are attaching and at the inner surface and anterior surface you can see the pubic bone and the pubic bone here it must be articulated with the other pubic bone so uh, at the symphysial surface and also at the posterior side and uh, in inner surface uh, or the sacropelvic surface you can see the auricular uh, auricular uh, facet and uh, here it's the arcuate line so the position of the uh, hip bone in my body it's located like this again acetabulum outer side tubercle or tuberosity ischial tuberosity it's posterior side the notch posterior side the pubic bone directed forward toward the medially in midpoint here is articulated with the other one and uh, here in this case the bone is uh, my right bone. Next bone is femur. This is the strongest bone of your body and is classified as a long bone. It has four main parts. Head or caput, neck or column, body or corpus and the distal part is called condylar part of the femur. We are going to discuss each part, the details of each part. Head of the femur is a ball shaped structure that is articulated with the acetabulum specifically lunate surface approximately the diameter of the head of the femur is four and a half centimeter at the top of the or at the part of the head of the femur it's a small depression which is called fovea and the fovea of the head of the femur or fovea capitis femoris uh, then later you will see uh, uh, at the dissection that one ligament is 
attaching here, which is called head of, ligament of the head of the femur that we are going to discuss. Then the next part is the neck of the uh, femur and uh, distally it's uh, joining with the body. The angle between the neck and body of the femur is approximately 125 degree, they call it colodiaphysal angle. Then uh, at the body or corpus, you can see like a humerus that we had a greater and lesser tubercle. Here at the femur, we have cranially and laterally, cranially and laterally, the greater trochanter, trochanter, and more medially and posteriorly is the lesser trochanter. Cranial and laterally is the greater trochanter, and posteriorly and medially is the lesser trochanter. Uh, the connection between them at the posterior side is the intertrochanteric crest, crest at the posterior side, and at the anterior side, the connection of the greater trochanter and lesser trochanter is via this line, which is called intertrochanteric line. So line is in at the anterior side and crest is at the posterior side. Intertrochanteric crest and intertrochanteric line. Inside the greater trochanter here, you can see a fossa, which is called trochanteric fossa. Here, trochanteric fossa. Then, if you find the greater trochanter and lesser trochanter, below the greater trochanter, there is a, a tuberosity, which is called gluteal tuberosity. Here is the gluteal tuberosity is the place for the insertion of the gluteus maximus. Then, if you find the lesser trochanter, below the lesser trochanter, you can see a line which is called pectinal line. Pectinal line. This is the place for attachment of the pectinus muscle. Then, at the posterior surface of the shaft or body of the femur, you can see a line which is called linea aspera, linea Latin, and English is line, linea aspera. Linea aspera has two lip or labrum, medial lip and lateral lip that they are fusing together and they are continuing as a lina aspera and when we are going toward distal side the medial lip and the lateral lip they are separating from each other and between them it reminding a somehow tri triangular shape surface which is called popliteal surface popliteal surface this is determining the place that you will we will discuss it in topographic anatomy as a popliteal fossa uh, uh, in lower limb then uh, at the distal part of the femur, which is called condylar part because of the presence of the uh, condyles of the femur, that we have the medial condyle and the lateral condyle, 
that usually the lateral condyle is located sagittally and medially is a little bit is curved anteriorly and above and lateral to each condyle we have the lateral epicondyle and the medial epicondyle which is again is bigger and above that there is a place they called adductor tubercle and uh, here the, the posterior surface of the body of the, of the femur the line that is connecting the two condyle again posterior surface is called intercondylar line can show it to you intercondylar line here it's the place that is connecting the two condyle at the posterior side and the two condyle at the posterior side are separated by this fossa which is called intercondylar fossa intercondylar fossa and if I turn it to the anterior side the two condyle they are fusing together and at this place which is you have it here uh, is called patellar surface patellar surface we say it because the patella is articulated in at this uh, surface so to recognize that which side is anterior or which side is posterior for example, again, when you know all this part of the uh, bone, so you can choose uh, any landmark to recognize if it is posterior and uh, anterior. So whenever you see this patellar surface, it must be anterior, anterior side. And the easier, whenever you see the intercondylar fossa, it means that this bone is at the posterior surface. Concerning the, uh, the proximal part, of course, you know that the head of the, uh, of the femur, it must be directed toward the, uh, the medial side because it's going to articulate at the acetabulum. So uh, here all its uh, landmark or lina aspera is at the posterior surface or trochanter uh, minor or the uh, lesser trochanter is at the uh, posterior surface. So if uh, I uh, consider all these landmark and if this, bo this part is anterior side and this part is uh, at the, toward the medial side, this bone that I have it in my body, it will be located in my right femur uh, bone. Next bone is patella. As a matter of fact, patella is the largest sesamoid bone uh, in the body because the patella is located inside the tendon of the quadriceps femoris muscle. So, uh, and we said the sesamoid bones, they are located inside the tendon. So, and this is the largest uh, uh, sesamoid bone that it exists. Uh, patella has two basic parts. The proximal part, which is more wider, is called base and the distal part which is narrow is called apex apex of the patella is not palpable because it is inside inside the patellar ligament very important ligament for example in at the uh, neurological examination for the reflex patella has two surface one surface which is called anterior surface, is toward anterior side. And the other surface is articular surface. Articular surface. They call it articular surface because it's articulated with the 
patellar surface of the femur. At the articular surface, we have two facets. One facet which is wider, and you can see it here, it's lateral facet. And the other side is, uh, is medial facet, which is smaller. So thanks to this difference between the lateral facet, which is wider, and the medial facet, which is smaller, you can recognize that this patella that uh, I have, or any patella that you have, if it is right side or left side. So it means that if, I, if the patella is on the superior proximal side is wider, and this one is the apex which is in the distal side and here is anterior surface and here is articular surface so if the location it will be like this this patella thanks to this wider lateral facet it's my left patella anterior surface articular surface, the base, the apex distally, and the lateral side, its outer side, it must be uh, located laterally, and you can recognize the lateral side because of the wider lateral facet than the uh, smaller uh, medial facet. So this bone is located, is, is the left patella. Okay, next bone is tibia. At the crural region or the region of the leg, uh, the tibia is one of the bones that they are located in the crural region at the medial side and more located anteriorly. The tibia is classified as a long bone and it has the proximal part, which is called condylar part of the tibia. Then we have the body of the tibia and then the distal part which is composed of the medial malleolus or medial ankle uh, is those parts, important parts of the tibia. So we are going to explain the details of each part. The tibia has two condyle at the proximal side the medial condyle and the lateral condyle. So, if you can see the articular surface of the medial condyle is more oval shape and bigger and the articular facet or surface of the lateral condyle is smaller and somehow is a round. This whole superior surface that is articulated with the condyle of the femur it means of course between them there are meniscus that we are going to discuss at the joint session so hold this surface the, is called superior articular surface of the tibia at the center you see these two ball shaped structure that together is called intercondylar eminence. Intercondylar eminence is consists of the medial intercondylar tubercle and the lateral intercondylar tubercle. Both of them they make and they form intercondylar eminence. Then we go at the region of the body, you can see a tuberosity, which is called tibial tuberosity. If you remember, we had it also in radius, in ulna, at the anterior side, it was the place for attachment of the tendon of the muscle. Uh, here we have a tubi tibial tuberosity, and here is the place for attachment of the patellar ligament. Then, at the posterior side, if you find the lateral condyle, 
Be careful. Lateral condyle. At the posterior side and inferior part of the lateral condyle, you can see an oval shape articular facet. This is called fibular articular facet. This is the place that the head of the fibula, the next bone at the crural region, is articulated with the tibia. <clears throat> That's why it's called fibular articular facet. When we find the fibular articular facet under and at the posterior part of the lateral condyle, from here is starting an oblique line here. It's called soleal line. Soleal line, we mention it because the muscle uh, at the back side of the leg region is called soleus muscle. It's attaching here, so that's why they call it solar line. And then when, whenever you see the solar line, usually under this line, if you see a small foramen, this is called nutrient foramen, that the small vessels, they are going here and they are supplying this uh, bone. At the region of the body of the, uh, of the tibia, we have three margins. This margin that you can see and is located anteriorly, again, it's the same side of the tibial tuberosity. This is called anterior margin. Then the lateral margin that you see here, like a radius and ulna also, because it's toward the fibula, which is located laterally, is called interosseous uh, margin. Interosseous margin. So, and then, of course, at the medial side also, we have another margin, which is called medial margin. So, anterior margin under the skin is easily palpable. The football player, if they uh, have some uh, heat in this region, so it's very painful because it's immediately located under the skin. And the interosseous margin is in the lateral side and the medial margin is in the medial side. In this case, we have three surfaces. These surfaces laterally is called lateral surface. This surface medially is called medial surface. And finally, the posterior part is called posterior surface. Then we go to the distal part. The distal part of the, uh, of the uh, tibia is, consists of this structure, like radius and ulna that they had the styloid process. Here at the tibia and fibula we have malleolus. Tibia, it has the, this structure which is called medial malleolus, that they are forming the medial ankle and inside it has a, an articular facet which is called the articular facet of the medial malleolus which is articulated with the uh, tarsal bone talus that, or talus that we are going to discuss. Behind the medial malleolus there is a small and shallow groove here which is called the uh, malleolar groove the groove of the medial malleolus. Here it passing a, a, a tendon of the muscle. And the other side, which is at the lateral side of the distal part of the tibia, you have a, a notch, which is the place for the attachment of the distal part of the fibula. That's why they call it fibular notch. So, medial side, medial malleolus, lateral side, fibular notch. And finally, the inferior surface of the, of the tibia here, which is articulating with the tarsal bone, which is called talus or talus, is called inferior articular surface. In inferior articular surface. So to recognize that 
if this bone is left or uh, right. So if you consider the bone, whenever you see, if, of course, first of all, the condyle must be in the proximal side. Uh, the, whenever you see a tibial tuberosity, it's definitely this side is anterior side and you can see the anterior margin. So the anterior surface of this bone is like this. Posterior, as we said, we have this fibular articular facet and solar line, nutrient foramen. So vice versa is anterior side. And very important at the distal part, whenever you see the medial malleolus or medial ankle, this bone, it must be located uh, at the this side it must be located at the medial side. So this is uh, the left tibia that I have it. Next bone of the crural region or the leg region that is located on the lateral side and more posterior is fibula. Fibula is a long bone, it's classified as a long bone. It has three main parts. The proximal part is the head of the fibula or caput. Then the middle part is body of the fibula. And the distal part of the fibula which is uh, contain the lateral ankle of the foot or the lateral malleolus is called. Concerning the head, the head of the fibula at the top, it has apex. This is the apex of the head of the fibula. The head of the fibula at top, it has an articular surface, which is called articular surface or articular facet of the head of the fibula. After the head, as usual, we have neck of the fibula. Then is following with the body of the fibula. The body of the fibula has the anterior margin and also the similar interosseous margin that we had it in the uh, at the uh, tibia, so here we have also the interosseous margin of the fibula, which is directed medially toward the tibia, or directed tibially or medially toward the tibia. This is the uh, lateral, uh, its medial side, and in this case we have the uh, the the lateral the lateral margin or lateral border and in this case we have the medial surface lateral surface and the posterior surface uh, there is a small crest in the medial side which is called the medial crest which is not that much uh, uh, clinically important we are going to the uh, distal part the distal part of the of the fibula as you see it here, maybe we can concent uh, concentrate here in this region. Here it's the lateral ankle or lateral malleolus, lateral malleolus of the fibula. Uh, and the inside, in inner surface, it means on the medial side of the lateral malleolus, in internal surface, you have articular facet. Uh, which is called articular facet of the lateral malleolus, which is articulating with the uh, with the uh, talus or talus, the one of the uh, one of the bone of the uh, foot, and behind the lateral malleolus, again the similar sulcus that we had it in tibia is called the malleolar groove or sulcus. Uh, or lateral malleolar groove or sulcus is the place for the passage of the tendon of the muscle, specifically the long fibular uh, muscle or the long peroneal muscle is the same name. And uh, uh, the, another structure in the inner surface of the articular facet of the lateral malleolus, posteriorly we have 
and a specific fossa which is uh, located behind and is called maleolar fossa is the place for the uh, for the uh, ligament is uh, talofibular posterior talofibular ligament is uh, is attaching here at this uh, region so uh, this is uh, all uh, about the part of the fibula to recognize that if this fibula is uh, left or right so again uh, I will turn it here is the head of the fibula and you have the articular facet at the head of the fibula that we said then uh, you can recognize and the apex of course then you can concentrate at the lateral malleolus and uh, in the inner surface of the lateral malleolus is the articular facet of the lateral malleolus but the most important landmark that you can recognize because sometimes you are mistaking which part is head, which part is the distal part whenever you see that fossa uh, which is malleolar fossa it's uh, this part is the distal part and the fossa it's always located posteriorly so the the bone in the body is located like this and by the this information that the fossa is located posteriorly i put my finger on the post fossa to recognize so this is the fossa and my finger inside the fossa is located so the correct position of this bone in my body uh, is uh, it, at this position so in this case this is the lateral malleolus and my finger is the malleolar fossa and here is the interosseous margin toward the toward the medial side so this bone is uh, on a right side or the right fibula there are also another helpful uh, information that if you look at it uh, I will show it toward the camera if you look at it uh, at the distal part of the of the fibula you can see a, a right and a straight sharp edge that is going directly and straight and the other side it's from this area some oblique line is going toward the left or toward the right so here you can see this oblique line is going toward the right so whenever this V shape and this uh, oblique line it goes toward the right side this is the right one but if the V shape it goes toward the left side is is uh, is the left bone but uh, this is just for helping but if you respect that the fossa must be always in the posterior side and uh, also the lateral malleolus must be in the lateral side and the uh, uh, interosseous margin it will be on the medial side so definitely you can recognize that uh, if, if it is left or right and in this case this is the right bone we continue uh, about the bones of the uh, foot the bones of the foot like uh, bones of the hand we classified it to the uh, three main groups uh, here we have seven tarsal bones they are called tarsus or tarsal bones uh, in the hand we said that there are eight carpal bone here there are seven tarsal bones with the irregular shape then we have five long bones that they are called metatarsal bones and then uh, the same as hand we have the long bones that they are called os digitorum or phalanges and for each finger we have the uh, the proximal phalanx, middle phalanx and distal phalanx except the toe that uh, we don't have middle phalanx uh, the first bone that I'm going to discuss for the tarsal group uh, bone is this bone uh, before I start uh, or this, this bone is 
is, is called talus. The talus, as you see it in my hand, it has a body, which is this part of the talus or talus. And the body has at the superior part a part which is called, is, looks like a trochla, and it's a trochla shape, it's called trochla of the talus. Uh, anteriorly or distally, the talus it continue as a round shape, ball shape structure which is called head of the talus. And the transitional place between the body and the head is the neck of the talus. Talus uh, is located in uh, my body that I'm sitting in from here, so that uh, this, the trochla of the talus, it must be upward, toward the superior. It means that the trochla of the talus has superior surface, has lateral surface for the articulation with the lateral malleolus of the fibula and also we have the medial surface or medial malleolar articular surface for the attachment or articulation with the uh, uh, articulation facet of the medial malleolus of the tibia. So all this whitish color that you see that they are part of the trochla, they are articulating with the different surface of the, uh, of the tibia and fibula. For the fibula is this lateral surface and for the tibia and the superior surface which is articulated with the inferior surface of the tibia and uh, in the medial surface which is articulating with the uh, medial malleolar surface of the tibia. Then, uh, at the posterior part of the uh, of the talus, we see a process which is called a posterior process. So, from this posterior process, you can recognize the uh, which side is posterior and which side is anterior. But the best landmark that whenever you see that the head of the talus is the distal or anterior side and here is the posterior side. The posterior process is composed of two tubercles. One tubercle which is located medially and the other tubercle which is called, uh, which is located laterally and between these two tubercles that they are forming the posterior process there is a groove that through this groove it passes the tendon of the muscle this terminology, I think, is the longest terminology in anatomy. The name of this groove, Latin name, is Sulcus tendinis musculi flexoris hallucis longi. It means the English, or the translation to English, is the groove for the tendon of the flexor hallucis longus muscle. Groove for the tendon of the flexor hallucis longus muscle which is passing here and it goes to the plantar region. So if I uh, turn the inferior surface of the talus, you can see that at the inferior surface of the talus we have three articular facet. This is one which is the biggest one this is in the middle and one is in the here that uh, is seen here. So they are called talar articular, uh, the calcanar articular facet because the talus at this part, this three place, is articulating with the next uh, tarsal bone that I'm going to discuss which is here and is called calcanus. As you see, the talus is sitting on calcanus at the inferior surface. So that's why they call it calcanar, the posterior calcanar articular uh, set, facet, the middle one and the anterior uh, calca articular facet for the calcanus. Between the posterior and middle, 
always you can find a groove which is called the talar groove or groove of the talus here. This groove of the talus when you can see that if it is clear this groove of the talus it's when it's sitting on the calcaneus this groove it goes to the similar groove that we have it on the calcaneus that I will show you in a while and in this case we don't have a groove but we have a tunnel shape which is called tarsal sinus this is called tarsal sinus where my pincet is going and is the place for the uh, attachment of the ligaments the other structure that you can find it at the region of the uh, of the uh, talus is the head of the talus the head of the talus is articulated distally with uh, this uh, with this uh, tarsal bone which is called navicular bone and that's why at the head of the talus we have articular facet for the navicular bone because distal is articulating with the uh, navicular bone uh, the last structure that I, I show it is the lateral process the lateral process of the talus which is seen here it's sitting on the part of the calcanus that I uh, show it to you uh, in a while so for whenever you see a lateral process so it's determining that this part or this area is the lateral part and this area that it doesn't have any process is the medial part and the back side is the posterior process with this two tubercle and the groove that I mentioned. The <coughs> calcaneus, the calcaneus is the largest tarsal bone, uh, the largest tarsal bone and it's located in my body like this. It means that the posterior side which is uh, making the heel of the foot it has a large tubercle which is called tubercle of the calcaneus or sometimes it's called also tuberosity of the calcaneus or calcanar tuberosity or tubercle that is palpable in the back side of the foot, foot and is forming the heel and uh, also the similar articular facet that we had it in the talus you have it and is in the inferior surface of the talus now we have the similar articular facet at the superior part of the calcaneus because talus from the above it's sitting on the calcaneus and they are the same and because it's articulating with the talus or talus is called talar articular facet the posterior middle and anterior or articular facet for the talus between the posterior articular facet and the middle again similar groove we have which is called calcanar groove or the groove of the calcaneus that when the talus is sitting on the calcaneus as i mentioned it between the groove it will reminding the uh, the sinus which is called uh, tarsal sinus so this groove it goes opposite to the uh, groove for the talus and it's it's closing and it's called tarsal sinus if you uh, pay attention to the middle articular facet for the talus you see that this articular facet the middle one is sitting on this structure which is called sustentaculum tali sustentaculum tali is located on the lateral side and as you see in this model you see that here is the sustentaculum tali and is the place that the talus is uh, is sitting some part of the talus on this 
projection which is called sustentaculum tali and carrying the middle articular facet for the uh, talus. Under the sustentaculum tali that you can see it here is the similar uh, groove that we had it on the posterior uh, process of the talus which is the same groove that the tendon of the muscle which is passing at the posterior surface of the or posterior process of the talus it's going to the plantar side and it's going under the sustentaculum tali in this area and that's why the same groove is the mus uh, the uh, the sulcus tendinis musculi flexoris hallucis longi or the groove for the tendon of the flexor hallucis longus muscle it's continue here and it goes to the first uh, finger the toe the uh, last structure for the uh, for the calcaneus is uh, the calcaneus distally it has the articular process because as you see it here the calcaneus distally is articulate with the other tarsal bone which is called cuboid bone cuboid bone is other uh, other tarsal bone which is proximally it means dorsally or proximally is uh, articulate with the calcaneus so that's why here is called cuboidal articular uh, facet for the articulation with the cuboid bone uh, another structure that sometimes is seen in the at the uh, calcaneus is that uh, in this area we have one um, uh, roughness or a structure which is called uh, peroneal or fibular trochla and uh, uh, around this trochla it pass uh, is exists the groove which is called groove for the uh, for the long fibular muscle uh, the tendon of the long fibular muscle is passing here so that's why it's called sulcus tendinis musculi fibularis longi or peronei longi the name of the muscle either it, it can be called fibularis longus or peroneus longus both of them there is correct and at the muscle session we are going to discuss it but the tendon is passing uh, here on the uh, lateral side of the calcaneus it means here since uh, I have the calcaneus so immediately I'm going to discuss with the bone another tarsal bone that uh, the uh, articulating proximally with the calcaneus and is cuboid bone. The cuboid bone uh, is uh, the bone which is uh, which is uh, has the articular uh, facet for the calcaneus. So it means that it has a calcanar articular facet for the articulation with the cuboidal articular facet of the calcaneus in proximal side and at the distal part it has two articular facet which is articulated distally with the fourth with the fourth and fifth metatarsal bones so uh, at the lateral side and plantar side the here is the dorsal side of the foot and the sole of the foot is called plantar side of the foot so on the lateral side and the plantar side of the uh, cuboid bone we have a tuberosity which is called tuberosity of the cuboid bone and anterior to that there is a groove the same groove that we mentioned it here it's the tendon for is the groove for the passage of the tendon of the lung fibularis muscle or fibularis longus or peroneus longus muscle here so the important landmark of the uh, cuboidal bone the articular facet which is the calcanar articular facet which is proximally articulated with calcaneus the two articular facet with the articulation with the base of the fourth and fifth meta metatarsal bone at the plantar and the lateral side we have a tuberosity and on in front of the tuberosity is the groove for the 
uh, tendon of the fibularis longus muscle. So once more here in the model also I can show you. So this is the cuboid, this is the articular facet for the uh, articulation with the calcanus. Here there are two articular facets for articulation of the base of the fourth and fifth metatarsal. And here, a little bit laterally, uh, is uh, toward the small finger. So here is the laterally, this is the tuberosity of the, as you see, that is in the plantar side, uh, is the tuberosity of the cuboid bone. And here is the groove, if the camera is catching it. So there is a groove that the tendon of the fibularis longus or peronus longus is passing here. Next bone that I am going to discuss is the navicular bone. The navicular bone is immediately at the distal part of the head of the talus is located. And if you remember, I said that head of the talus, it has the articular facet to, for articulation with the navicular bone. So in this case, there are articulating. So it means that at the proximal part of the navicular bone, you have a fossa, which is the place for the articulation of the head of the talus. So in this model, you can look at it. So this is the head of the talus, and this is the fossa or the uh, articular facet for the head of the, uh, the talus which is located at the proximal part. Then at the distal part of the navicular bone we have three articular facet for the articulation with the three, uh, three uh, uh, bones of the uh, tarsal bones and they are the medial cuneiform, the intermediate cuneiform and the lateral cuneiform. So here is the place for attachment of the medial cuneiform, here is the intermediate cuneiform, and there are the, this is for the lateral cuneiform. So they have three cuneiforms that all of them, they are articulated proximally with the distal part of the, of the navicular bone. So that's why here is the articular surface or articular facet for the three cuneiform bones. The last information about the uh, navicular bone is this part. The navicular bone also at the medial and plant, plantar part, so it means inferior, medi inferiorly and medially, so it's located is like this, so that it's in the plantar side is palpable, it has this structure which is called tuberosity of the uh, navicular bone, which is directed in, uh, inferiorly, it means plantary and medially. And I can show you at this model, which is here, and under the skin is palpable, that's tuberosity. Then, of course, we have the rest of the tarsal bone. There are the three cuneiform that already I mentioned it. We have the medial, intermediate, and the lateral one. The most important for you to know that which one is articulated with which. All these three uh, cuneiform proximally they are articulating with the uh, navicular bone. Then the medial cuneiform is distally articulate with the first metatarsal or metatarsus, metatarsus hallucis. Whenever you hear the terminology of hallucis, we are talking about the toes, so it means that the first finger. Then the intermediate cuneiform distally is articulate with the second metatarsal, mainly, we are talking about the mainly because some of them they are articulated some part with the neighborhood, and the illateral met, uh, cuneiform bone is distally articulated with the third metatarsal bone. The, comparing to uh, the cuneiform bone, the medial cuneiform is the biggest one, the intermediate is the smallest and shortest one, 
and the lateral one is the intermedium in the side that distally articulated with the third metatarsal and laterally is articulated with the, with the cuboid bone. Concerning the medial cuneiform, the medial cuneiform, like a uh, thumb of the hand, that we had a saddle articular facet. Here, for the medial cuneiform, we have a kidney shape articular facet, which is articulated with the base of the uh, first metatarsal bone, which is also has a kidney shape to match. For that so and it's articulating uh, together in this case so uh, whenever you see that there is a kidney shape articular facet at the distal part uh, so here is the medial cuneiform bone concerning the metatarsal bones Metatarsal bones, as we mentioned it, they are long bones that they contain three parts. This is exactly uh, like a hand. We have base, we have body, and we have, uh, we have head of the metatarsal bone. So again, at the dorsal part, they are flat or a little bit convex. At the plantar part, they are somehow concave. Then the strongest uh, metatarsal and shortest is the first or metatarsus hallucis. One that at the base it has a kidney shape articular facet. The longest one is the second metatarsus. And the uh, the uh, exceptional structure that uh, we can find it in the fifth uh, metatarsal bone is this structure which is at the base of the fifth metatarsal bone we had the we have the tuberosity of the fifth uh, fifth meta metatarsal bone or metatarsus quinti uh, you have it at the base this structure which is called tuberosity of uh, fifth metatarsal bone. And finally, there are the os digitorum or phalanges that the same principle that we explain it for the phalanges or os digitorum of the uh, hand. We have long bone, they are long bone and they have three main parts, the base at the proximal, the body uh, at the uh, middle and the head is at the uh, distal part so uh, 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 and they are the long bones we have three in each finger the proximal part middle part and the distal part uh, as you see the middle and distal they are not well developed like a hand region uh, that you that's why you cannot do the uh, things uh, or the works that you are doing with your hand and uh, the principal uh, structure that uh, you recognize them between the proximal and middle and, and distal phalanx is the same. It means that at the base, if it is one fossa uh, and uh, at the head, the trochlar shape, it's the proximal uh, phalanx for the foot or the digitorum. And uh, for the middle one, if there is a two a fossa between them, a ridge at the base and the trochla at the head, it will be middle phalanx and again uh, at the distal part of the head of the distal phalanx we have the nail shape uh, structure roughness which is called uh, tuberosity of the distal phalanx. And again uh, similar to hand, uh, the first finger or toes, they don't have the middle phalanx so that's why uh, we have only proximal and distal phalanx. And at the end, uh, of course, as uh, we mentioned it, uh, at the region of the metacarpophalangeal uh, joint, uh, there are two sesamoid bones, similar place at the region of the, at the, region of the metatarso, the first metatarsophalangeal 
metatarsophalangeal joint which is here they are inside the tendon of the muscle there are two uh, small bones they are called sesamoid bones uh, that usually is uh, it can be found at the level of the this joint which is metatarsophalangeal first metatarsophalangeal joint or metatarsophalangeal hallucis joint okay dear student that's all about the bones of the lower limb I hope it will be useful for you I would like again to thank my colleague Dr. Petrashek and uh, I wish you have a nice uh, day and uh, uh, stay safe and study hard. Thank you for your attention.